Hello students, this is Anupam Sharma and today we are going to study chapter 6 of our English book Footprints Without Feet. The chapter is The Making of a Scientist written by Robert Peterson. In this lesson we will study about the author, introduction of the lesson and summary of this lesson. Dear children, do you enjoy collecting things like coins or stamps? This story is about you all who are curious to collect simple things and general information. Let's listen to this lesson and know the story of a simple boy like you who used to collect butterflies and eventually became a very famous scientist. This lesson is written by Robert W. Peterson. Let's study about the author. Robert W. Peterson was an American newspaper writer who later became a freelance author of magazine articles and books. Especially on the topics of sports and scouting, his 1970 chronicle of Negro League Baseball titled Only the Ball Was White was hailed by the New York Times as having recaptured a lost era in baseball history and a rich facet of black life in America. Now introduction of the lesson. The Making of a Scientist is a story of a curious child who is channelizing his curiosity to become a scientist. Richard Ebright was very close to his mother and she plays a key role in developing his interest in science. Ebright began his journey by collecting butterflies. Later on, he did research on the purpose of gold sports on pupae of monarch butterflies. His paper on working of cell got published in a scientific journal and he became famous. Let's read how this curious child who collected butterflies went on to become one of the greatest scientists of the world. This story teaches us that with perseverance, dedication and hard work, any dream is achievable. Let's study the summary of the lesson The Making of a Scientist. This chapter is a story about the famous scientist Richard Ebright. Richie, as his mother used to call him, was a very curious child right from his childhood. He had started collecting butterflies in his childhood. And when he was two years old, he had already collected all the 25 species found near his hometown. He thought it to be an end of butterfly collection until one day his mother bought him a book named The Travels of Monarch X. This was a turning point in his life and he got much more interested in dealing with science. He started with tagging butterflies which was a task given at the end of the book that his mother bought for him. Then, once when he entered the county science fair with the slide of the frog tissue he lost. Everybody won something, but his project did not win any prize. He was sad, but also understood that to win, he needed to do real experiments and not just make neat and clean models. Then he wrote down to Dr. Ukuhart at the University of Toronto asking him for ideas to make projects. He stayed busy during his high school working on the long list sent to him by Dr. Ukuhart. Then for the next year's fair, 
He chose the project of looking at the viral disease that killed nearly all the Mola caterpillars every few years. He thought that the reason for this could be a beetle. So, he started raising caterpillars in the presence of beetles but could not get any results. So, when he showed this his trial experiment at the county science fair, his project won a prize. Then for the next year, he made an experiment to show that the viceroy butterflies copied monarchs. This project also made him win prizes. Then he started his research for the purpose of the 12 golden spots on the back of a monarch pupa. Everybody believed that it was just a design. But Dr. Okuhart thought otherwise. Then a bright and other brilliant science students got together and made a device that could show that the gold spots were responsible for releasing a hormone that was necessary for its growth. With the help of sophisticated instruments at one of the labs, he got a chance to work and found the chemical structure of the hormone in the gold spots. Then, one day, while looking at the photo of the chemical structure, he solved one of the biggest puzzles of life. He came to know how a cell blueprints its DNA. It was a big breakthrough and was published in a magazine. He also had many other interests and also admired his social studies teacher as he was the one who used to give him new ideas. He was good at debating, public speaking and a great canoeist. He never used to win for the sake of winning or for prizes but because he wanted to be the best at whatever he used to do. It is shown in this chapter that with the right amount of curiosity, a bright mind and a will to win for right reasons are the qualities needed to be a scientist. His mother also played a big role in making him what he was, as it was she who supported him throughout his journey and brought him the book The Travels of Monarch X, which aroused his curiosity in the field of science. Dear students, this lesson is very important as it tells about the making of a scientist. Let's find out some of the important points of the life of Richard Ebright that made him a great scientist. Richard Ebright became a scientist because he had a driving curiosity along with a bright mind. He started his journey from collecting the butterflies. This led him to discover the theory of life cells. He was not just interested in science, he took interest in other activities too. So students, there are many qualities that go into making of a scientist. He was curious, dedicated and hardworking. He was competitive but not in a bad sense. He had a will to win. He was intelligent and worked for the right reasons. He didn't run after prizes. Another important factor that helped a bright achieve greatness was the role of his mother. She was a great driving force in making of him as a scientist. She always encouraged him and developed his interests in learning. She took him on trips, bought him telescope, microscopes, cameras, mounting materials, etc. She got him the book The Travels of Monarch X, which opened a new world for him. Moreover, Everett was her whole life after his father's death. He was his mother's only companion. She would find work for him that will make him learn new things. Because Everett liked to work and he wanted to learn more and more. Dear students, if you want to know more about John Everett and the making of a scientist, and how his mother helped him become a scientist and how his curiosity led him to be a scientist. Watch tomorrow's lesson for the complete explanation of this lesson.